Hello, well in this video I would like to focus on the licensing and the way the licenses can be managed in the multi-server installation. As always, we will start with a little bit of a theory. So, let's say we've got a standard MyQX Enterprise license. That's a short recap for those who have seen the licenses. So, for one enterprise, you automatically get one MFD with the embedded terminal. And of course, unlimited number of single function devices. That would be for the standalone installation. But how it's done when it comes to the multi server one? Now, is there a multi server special license? The answer is no. Of course, there is no special license, it will not cost you anything extra. The standard MyQ Enterprise can be used for both standalone and multi server installations. That's just one difference, and then when you use the license in the multi server environment, meaning you activate it on the central server, you automatically get the unlimited number of servers, and uh, the license management is really flexible, as I will explain later, because it means that you will just activate a complete set of licenses on the central, and then you can just divide them to each individual site. For each site server, you just need one enterprise license, and that way, based on the number of licenses, you get the number of servers. So, let me show how it actually works. So again, like in previous cases, we've got a central server and three different sites. Now, I've bought a set of 250 licenses for the enterprise, that way I can have 250 MFDs with the embedded terminal. All these licenses are activated on the central server, meaning that we're no longer checking really the hardware of each individual site because everything is activated against the database of your central server. So as you can see here in my example, I've got now 250 licenses, 250 embeds available on the central server. Important thing is that the central server cannot actually print so to be able to print, we have to put that license on a print server. And so we'll do it. When we are just creating a site, we can just say how many licenses should be assigned to that site. So uh, as an example, I've just put 100 embedded licenses to the Prague server. As you can see, there are only 150 remaining on the central server. Same thing, we'll just assign additional 100 to London and remaining 50 to New York. Now, these licenses are actually not really bound to that side if they're not used by the machine with the embedded terminal. So now, you can just reorganize them based on your needs. So if you will find out that some licenses are not used, like here on in New York, 20 of those can be returned to the central server. And then it's up to you how you will use them. So the first example might be that we might need them on an existing site. So here in London, I will assign 10 of these licenses. As you can see, we still have 10 licenses available on the central site. And like I've mentioned before, the system allows you to create as many sites based on the available licenses. So as we have 10 remaining licenses, we can just create another site and assign those licenses there. It's up to you how you will divide them. You can return them, you can use them whenever you want. If the license is not used by the machine, you can put it wherever you like. Now there's one really important piece of information, and that's the one you can now see in the top left corner of the screen. And that's that each license that has been allocated to a particular site is valid only for 30 days. And of course, it's automatically renewed every time the site connects to the central server. Which means that if that site would be, uh, you know, working on its own without the connection to the central server, the license would automatically expire after 30 days, which is something like a safety precaution. On the other hand, uh, it also means, and that's actually the positive part of it, is that if you are doing some maintenance, or in a case there's some interruption in your network and you simply cannot connect to the central server, it will not really affect your services in that location because each individual site can work on its own for 30 days.
Now, as always, there's a time for a short recap. So, what this is about. The most important thing you should know and remember is that the standalone and multi-server installations are using the one and very same license. There is no special license, no special item code for the multi-server installation. The licenses are managed from a central point, which is the central server. They are also activated against that server and you can then just distribute them to each site you have in your system. Now that's just one condition of that distribution and that, that the license should not be used by any machine. Once the license is free, it's up to you where you will allocate it, if it is another server you have or you can create another additional site on top of those you already use. What is also really important to know is that the licensing server of MyQ checks only the central server hardware, which is very important message, especially when you are using the MS cluster environment, because the hardware of these sites is no longer checked. And if you will switch from one node to another, this will not affect the performance. And the second thing is that the site license is valid only for the already mentioned 30 days, which on the other hand allows us to use that site in a case the connection with the central server has been interrupted, the site can work on its own, provide the copying, scanning, printing, all the services you are used to. Now as always, there are a few topics I will definitely recommend you to watch and this time it's just one, and that's the MyQ licensing. So thank you for watching this video, and let's see each other at another of the product-related training.